Hello and welcome to the Physio channel. In this video we're going to have a look at bunions and what we can do to fix them or manage them. A bunion can develop when the big toe or great toe moves across the other toes. The medical name for the issue is called hallux valgus. The hallux is the big toe and valgus refers to the drifting direction of the toe as it moves out laterally. Bunions can be caused by lifestyle factors and there's thought to be a hereditary component to it, but it may not be directly inherited from your parents. It can often skip a generation or come from more distant family members. In this video, we're going to share five techniques for reducing bunion pain, managing hallux valgus, and generally reducing pain from the big toe and the ball of the foot. Let's have a look at the five techniques that we're going to show you. So the first technique we're going to talk about is actually related to your shoes. And what we suggest is you avoid wearing or even throw away those pointy shoes that you may have in your shoe closet. Let's have a look at some of the things that we're talking about. This is probably one of the worst shoe designs for people suffering from big toe pain uh, and bunions specifically. And that's for two reasons. One, as you can see, it's got a very pointy toe box. That's the bit at the front where your toes go. So it's not really very naturally designed or ergonomically designed because the big toe is going to be shifted across by the narrowing of the front of the boot. And the other feature is the fact that it's got a significant heel. Heeled shoes, high heeled shoes or heeled boots like this, throw the weight onto the front of the foot and put more weight and stress through the ball of the foot. So if you have a bunion, it's gonna hurt a lot more and it's also going to potentially make the bunion um, worsen and progress a lot faster by the way of the fact the foot is raised up from the heel and the narrowing of that toe box. So they're two key features which can make your toe pain much worse. For uh, gentlemen wearing more formal shoes, which may not have such a heel on them, it's still important to consider the front of the shoe and to look at a toe box that may be narrowing and causing that big toe to shift across, aggravating a bunion and maybe making it progress faster than it should. So what you want to do is find some footwear with a wide toe box. As you can see the front of that one there where your toes are going to go, it's got a nice broad front to it. So it's gonna give your toes, all of your toes, especially the big toe, more room to move and spread out. But how do you know if the front of the shoe is wide enough? Well, I'm gonna show you a simple technique now. Okay, so there's a couple of things you can do. One of them is to remove the insole from the shoe, which will allow you to then place your foot on the insole of the shoe and check to see whether it's wide enough and whether it's going to allow your big toe to go in line. So that's with my sock on. It probably makes more sense if I quickly whiz my sock off there, place it on there, and you can see that that's gonna allow my big toe to be in a nice straight line and it's not too pointy. So that's good. The other way is to actually look at the bottom of the shoe, to look at the bottom of the shoe to determine whether it's wide enough. So to do that, place the shoe upside down, place your foot on top, and you can see that the foot then is gonna fit easily in the toe box. And of course, it's very logical to simply put your foot in the shoe in the first place, but if you're in a shoe shop, this is something that you can quickly do rather than having to try and put your foot in lots of, uh, lots of different shoes. So measure the insole, place your foot over the bottom, and of course, just put your foot in the shoe to see whether there's a nice spacious toe box. For technique number two, we're going to look at splinting the great toe. Now you can use a night splint, such as the one shown on the screen here, and as the name suggests, this is to be worn at night. And as you can see, it can be a little bit cumbersome and certainly not something you could wear during the day. But these are commonly worn at night in order to uh, slow down the progress of uh, hallux valgus 
and potentially to lead to some correction by stopping the toe from continuing to drift or rest into that valgus position that we're looking at here. So that's the night splint. Now I want to show you what could be called a day splint. We need to create something which can shift the position of the toe without causing any cumbersome discomfort and allowing the patient to walk normally during the day. So I've got some rock tape here, this kinesiology tape. It's five centimeters wide, which is too wide to go around the toe. So I can cut that to make it thinner. And what I'll do is cut it in half. So therefore it's going to be 2.5 centimeters wide. I'll then remeasure it to show you what I've done. So I put it through the web space of the toe and then wrapped it around both sides of the toe so I can use it to gently pull that big toe back towards a better alignment. Now I'm gonna get it to come in closer now so you can have a good look at what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see the tape that I've cut. I'm going to just show that measurement again, wrapping around the toe like so. Round the ends of the tape. It's always a good idea because it makes the tape last longer as the edges don't catch on clothing and fall off. Tear the backing paper to expose the glue side of the tape like so. Place that in the web space of the toe. And then one side at a time. So I'll take the upper side first of all. I'll move that toe across towards a corrected position as far as is comfortable for the patient. As you can see, this patient does not have hallux valgus, but they, they would have their toe would drift across in this valgus position if I was to push it across or if they were to wear those pointy shoes that we were just talking about. So we get that toe into a straight position there and pull that tape around. It's gonna just go underneath the arch of the foot and finish off underneath the foot. We then take the other piece of tape, bring it around the other way, add some correction to the toe and stick that tape down, finishing off over the top of the foot like so. In comparison to the other foot, there is a bit more of a shift. So it's a varus shift, valgus being the one we're moving away from and varus being the one we're moving towards. So that will hold the toe in a straighter position. And I like to call this the day splint because it can be worn during the day and is effectively trying to achieve the same thing as the night splint that we just had a look at. Okay, so that is technique number two. For technique number three, consider using an orthotic to alter the pressure going through the ball of the foot. If the arch is collapsing or the patient is overpronating beyond an average amount, then it will be putting excessive pressure through the ball of the foot. By using an orthotic, and you can just buy a medical grade off the shelf orthotic, from a pharmacy or online. By getting the patient to use an orthotic, that's it. A good orthotic should have some built up material to provide support on the back of the foot on the medial heel. And by creating a slight lift there, it actually lifts the whole of the foot and particularly the arch and therefore takes some pressure off the front of the foot, off the ball of the foot. And that's important because some people think that or may end up buying orthotics that simply provide a large cushion underneath the arch. But a good medical grade orthotic should actually support the medial side of the heel here rather than having a giant cushion underneath the arch. Because a giant cushion underneath the arch, although it feels supportive, can actually be uncomfortable and cause some further stiffening and reduction of movement from the ball of the foot. So a medical grade orthotic from a pharmacy or online, one that simply will fit your foot, will give a bit of support on the medial heel and potentially reduce the pressure on the ball of the foot, therefore reducing the pain from the bunion. When you put an orthotic in a shoe, just remember to remove the existing insole so you don't have too much material causing the foot to be squashed in the shoe, which would likely make things worse. So that's the orthotic and that's technique number three. For technique number four, 
mobilize the joints around the foot. So here, our patient is mobilizing their ankle. They're in a lunge position and they're bringing their knee forwards over their foot in order to flex, or what we call dorsiflex, the ankle. And most importantly, rather than just going forward and back, you can see that they're coming in medially towards me, going in a straight line, and then of course going out laterally towards you guys there. So the joints being mobilized in multiple angles rather than just forward and back, and that can lead to a, a, an improved range of motion. The reason we're doing that is because if the ankle is more mobile, it will take some of the stress and requirement off the smaller foot joints to flex as well. But we're gonna get down and have a look at the, how we can mobilize those foot and toe joints just now. Next, we're gonna show you how to mobilize the joints in the middle of the foot called the mid tarsal joints. And this can be a lovely way of loosening up the foot, especially if it's sore and a bit stiff. So first of all, use one hand to grab around your heel, then use the other hand to grab around the front of the foot. Try and hold the foot comfortably and don't press on any tender points around the bunion, that's not necessary. So when you've got a comfortable hold of the front and the back of the foot, you can then move one one way and the other the other way to produce a twisting action. Let's have a closer look. For this next technique, we're gonna show you how you can actually mobilize your big toe joint, so that's the joint here, it's called the MTP joint, and I'll put what that stands for on the screen. So grab around the foot, and then use your other hand to hold the big toe, and then pull the big toe away from your foot, and this is called traction, because you're tractioning it away from your foot. This may give you some relief. If it does, continue to do it, and just enjoy the relief that it gives. You can also add a little bit of small circular movements like this in addition to the traction, which can be very comforting. Let me just show you guys this at a different angle. Keep the traction applied and then glide the joint up and down or forwards and backwards. And you can clearly see there the gliding of the joint. Once again, if this offers relief, then keep doing this for up to 30 seconds. For the third technique, we're gonna combine three different movements. Firstly, apply the traction by pulling the toe away, then glide the toe down towards the sole of the foot, and then bend the toe up into an extension position. Releasing tension further up the leg with some self-massage techniques, such as using a roller as shown here, can also help to reduce sensitivity and tension through the lower limb, including the foot, and also potentially down to the big toe as well. Remember, if you can increase the mobility of the larger joints, it may take some of the stress off the smaller joints as they may be required to move less during a normal walking pattern. A massage ball can also be used on the sole of the foot to massage through what can often be a tender area, especially for patients with bunions or hallux valgus. You can use a firm ball, but it may be worth investing in a massage ball because they tend to have the right texture and sometimes a slightly spiky surface, which can provide a good therapeutic input as well. And you can roll the ball around all the different areas on the sole of the foot, through the arch, both the inside of the arch and the outside as well. For technique number five, we want to look at toe strengthening exercises. The so the first simple one you can do is just with your foot placed on the floor, lift your toes up, all of your toes, including the great toe, lift them up and back down again, pressing them down into the floor and then lifting them up again. This is a good starting exercise. The next one you can do is to look to see whether you can differentiate the movement of the toes. To achieve this, you want to keep the big toe down whilst you lift the other four toes off the ground, a little tricky to do, and a little bit easier is to leave the four toes down while you lift the big toe up off the ground. Brilliant, so keeping these down and lifting the big one up.
Good, and down, and up, and down. And then leaving this one down, and lifting the others up. Another exercise you can do is the toe spreader and claw. So place your toes down, try and spread them out as much as possible, brilliant. And then claw them into the ground as if you're trying to grab the carpet and scoop the carpet up underneath your toes. Again, spread your toes out as far as you can and then claw the carpet and pull them back in. Okay, now let's look at some more specific toe exercises. See if it's possible with your big toe to make it move from side to side. Excellent. So try and move it away from the other toes and then back towards the other toes. For some people, it may be possible to get your big toe to move from side to side. But if you have developed hallux valgus or a bunion, it may be difficult to achieve this. So if it is, let me show you what you can do. If you're unable to actively move your toe out, which is of course very common when you've got hallux valgus and the toes come across here, then see if you can use your own hand to move your toe out and change its alignment, then press it down actively into the floor and hold it in that position and then momentarily press into the floor for a couple of seconds, just actively on your own and then relax and then press in again. If the toe drifts across, reposition it and then press the toe down gently into the floor for three seconds and relax. And you can repeat that so you're exercising the toe, strengthening the big toe in a straightened position, but you're just giving yourself some assistance in order to put it there in the first place. Okay, now with a little bit more equipment, we're going to use a ball, which is going to be placed between both feet. And the ball goes on the inside of the ball of the foot or slightly back just behind the ball of the foot with both feet placed flat on the floor. So place the ball between the feet just behind the big toe joints. Then take a rubber band, and in this case I've taken a small bit of exercise band and created a, a little toe exerciser, and place that around the toes. Okay, and then place the toes down. So as you can see what the band is doing, is using the elasticity to bring the toes into an improved alignment. And this here is just helping to support the position of the feet and the toes. And then the exercise is to move the toes up and down whilst taking advantage of the band and the elasticity pulling the toes into alignment. At home, hopefully you should be able to find a ball, uh, a tennis ball or something smaller will suffice and you can use an elastic band if you haven't got anything specific that you can put around your toes. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. We hope you found it helpful. There may be some other videos that interest you popping up on the screen here. As for now, we'll see you in the next video.